Hi guys, it's Jamila here from Slap. Today we're going to be doing a video on the worst makeup of 2021. Not all of these are terrible, just some of them are bad and some of them are a bit disappointing. So hopefully it's going to be interesting, hopefully it will be helpful, hopefully it will save you some cash. Anyway, I'm just going to get into it, but if you haven't subscribed already guys, please subscribe, we'd love to have you in the Slap family. And without further ado guys, here is the video. Okay guys, so first up on my list of the worst makeup of 2021. Now first I want to caveat this by saying there wasn't anything that terrifically bad. This year was really not a bad year for makeup with so many amazing products as my very long best makeup of 2021 will attest to. There was definitely a lot of great makeup this year so I would not worry too much. This video isn't going to be too scathing. First up guys is a product which I didn't like from the get-go. This is a product that the brand no longer exists anymore so it doesn't really matter because you can't buy it even if you wanted to but even if you saw it somewhere on sale somewhere I want you to know don't do it to yourself. So the first worst product of 2021 is the Becca Light Shifter Finishing Veil in Atmospheric 5. Now this product wasn't actually terrible, but as soon as I used it, the minute my clean brush touched it, it hard panned and then I had to kind of scrape it off. It's more of a finishing powder, so it's not really meant to set your face. It definitely didn't set my face. I remember doing a wear test and it just wasn't great. If you do see this anywhere, don't buy it because it's not very good. So next up, another product that was pretty terrible is the Westman Atelier Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm. have ranted about this quite a few times this year. I don't like this product because it doesn't work. It's a liquid lip balm. It's more of a liquid lip oil and as soon as you put it on your lips it gives your lips like a really nice succulent juicy finish, a really nice juicy feel um, but as soon as you drink a glass of water or you do anything or any water goes near your lips which is kind of impossible for it not to, it kind of breaks down the product and you just get this like really gross filmy feel on your lips and in your mouth and it's just really disgusting. So I do like the packaging of it and it was actually the first thing I bought from Westman Atelier which is so disappointing because I was really excited to try some more from the brand. You guys have said to me that there are some really nice products from the brand like the the stick blusher so I will eventually try something else from the brand but at the moment I'm kind of steering clear but this is the squeaky clean lip balm in the shade Mapoose and I love the shade it's such a nice berry the consistency is really lovely but unfortunately it just doesn't genuinely work. Next up, another product that wasn't great, unfortunately, is the uh, the Valentino Eye to Cheek Blusher and Shadow in the shade 12. This is supposed to be a blusher, but it's gold. So in my head, it was a highlighter because you can't really use gold as a blusher. Unfortunately for me, and unfortunately just in general, it, it feels very obvious and on the skin it doesn't look great and it's just not my favorite thing it's not terrible and it is very smooth but i think i think it was quite pricey and i think for what it is it's just not worth it you could use it as an eyeshadow but it seems like a really big waste of money to buy this as just an eyeshadow because it really doesn't work as a blusher and it really doesn't work as a highlight unfortunately so this is one of my worst of 2021 i did get this in another shade in a kind of deep uh brownie berry shade and that was actually really nice i've never used it again but it was nice and it was much more effective so i think if you try these in the actual blusher shades they won't be that bad another product on my worst makeup of 2021 is a product i did kind of do in my worst makeup of 2021 so far video and this is the wayne goss bronzer duo this is the radiance boosting face palette in the shade deep copper It's a duo, but both look pretty much the same. They're very dirty, muddy looking colors. They don't complement any deep skin tones. I can't think of one deep skin tone this is gonna look good on. It's just really not anything. It doesn't really show up on the skin. When it does, when you layer it up, it just tends to look muddier and uglier and it's just horrible it's really really horrible and i feel like it's a bit of a kick in the face to anyone who's a deeper skin tone because it's kind of just like Bleh. because it's not formulated with any one of a brown skin tone in, in mind it's not considered it's just 
random and weird and kind of rude. So I actually really despise this product and the more I look at it, the more annoyed I get. So I'm gonna put it down, but it's a really not a very good palette. They're both powdery shades. This came out when lots of people were doing really interesting duos, bronzer duos. And I just think when you look at this compared to the Victoria Beckham one, or you look at this compared to the Patrick Ta one, or the Tom Ford even, you just realize that this is just a nothing kind of palette. And it's kind of like someone saying, I know I have to create something for deeper skin tones, so I'm just gonna pop two random chalky things in a palette and give it to them and hope that they don't notice, and we do. A product I put in my worst makeup of 2021 so far, or I think it was in the Makeup I Regret buying video, and I, a product that pains me to do it every time. I just, I feel so dirty doing this, but this is the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blush. Now, some people are like this still, but I find it very hard to get out of the tube. I love the packaging. It's so cute, it's so considered, so lovely, but I find it very stiff. It very rarely comes out the tube, which is why I'm squeezing really, really, really hard. Uh, and I got some, <laughs> I got some, and it's, it's lovely, it's lovely. But I just don't want to work that hard for my blusher. Next up, another product that's on my worst makeup of 2021 list is the Dior Five Colors Couture 022 Cruise Eyeshadow Palette. Now this one was one of the first eyeshadow palettes I bought from Dior and I was so disappointed and so distressed. It was at a stage where I was trying to buy like lots of new makeup and just finding new things and not really thinking so much, okay, is it actually gonna work for my skin tone? Do I actually even care? And yeah, it's very cool. It's very, very ashy. There's like two shades in here that I can use and I thought I'd be okay with it, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not okay with it. They're very silky. They're really nice quality. They're perfectly fine if you like things that are very icy and cool and like early noughties, but not in an ironic way, then you will like this. But I think for most modern eyeshadow wearers now, these colors are just a bit like not flattering for, for most people. Now my last two really worst makeup of 2021 are the are two from Charlotte Tilbury and Charlotte Tilbury actually had a couple of brow products already and then she decided to change everything. She was gonna rip out the rule book, take up everything she'd already done and start new. She wanted to create a new three-step routine. She wanted you to, I can't remember what she said, fill, fluff and fix or something like that. And the idea was that she basically launched two new products. So she already had like a legendary brows. I used to have it in the shade Supermodel, which was such a nice product. I used it every day. And then she changed all the names. I didn't really know what was going on. And then she also introduced two new products. So she introduced a brow cheat brow pencil with a spoolie and a mechanical pen. And then she also released a brow fix clear brow gel. And I have two problems with both of these. So the brow cheat I got in the shade black brown. I kind of was very disappointed in the warmth of this brow pencil. It was very, very warm. It didn't feel like there was any black in it. And when you have it on your eyebrows, it looks very warm. It looks like you've got like a warm chestnut eyebrow on, which just isn't what I was looking for at all. And just didn't, you didn't, I didn't feel like the black was coming through. The actual product itself was very, very soft. And the minute I kind of started applying it to my brows, it got very soft and creamy and kind of just started to melt into my brows. But if you've tried something like the Precisely My Brow from Benefit, which is nice and firm and really like a pencil, or even the Gucci ones, they have a bit more resistance to like the warmth of your skin. And this one doesn't, this one really melts into your brows, which is nice if it was like a concealer and melting into your skin. But because it's a brow pen pencil and you need it to fill in your brows and stay within your brows and look natural, this is just a little bit too soft. My second thing, that I didn't like in her brow, new brow trio was the Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel. And I really, really liked this at first. I thought it was quite cool. My only beef with it, with it was that it did kind of clear away the brow pencil I just applied. I'd apply the brow cheat to my brows and then I put this on and it would just start taking away all of the pencil in my brow. And I didn't know if it was just because this was like 
just taking away the brow pencil or the brow pencil was too soft and not staying. Either way, they kind of were incompatible considering that they were made for each other. It just didn't make any sense to me. So I started using this on its own just for like no makeup makeup mornings just to kind of groom up my brows. But then it started to kind of get peely and leave like a residue on my eyebrows. And I started to notice it every now and then. And then the more I the more I used it, the more I realized it was just leaving like residue in my brows, which was kind of gross. So it made me look gross and also didn't really perform. So now I've done with the worst makeup of 2021. And not all of it is that bad, to be fair. I just kind of got myself riled up. <laughs> I feel like, whoa, that was really intense. Now I'm going to get on to the products that were disappointing. They weren't terrible for the most part, but they were either disappointing or silly. So the first one in that category is the Dior Lip Balm. This came out as kind of like a nice glamorous lip balm and I did actually really like the look of it and I kept seeing it online and I thought that is just the chicest thing. I really, really want it and I kept kind of putting myself off getting it. I didn't know whether I should get it. And because I bought the Tom Ford lip blush and I do really like that product and I was using it a lot, I felt like, okay, I can probably justify buying this. Let's see if it's as good as the Tom Ford lip balm. And I'm not sure it really is. I think the Tom Ford one is a lot more moisturizing. It also has a tint to it. So it gives it a bit more of a reason to be. Whereas this one is beautifully packaged. I love the packaging, although it is peeling. I do love the concept of it. I love all the kind of Dior ness of it all and like the little red on the inside it's very chic it's very luxurious but i just don't think it's actually a very good lip balm when i do apply it when i'm out and about i do know that my lips are going to be dry pretty soon after me applying but it is a nice pleasure to use it's just not very good another product that proved to be a little bit disappointing this year was the fenty beauty eavesdrops I got this in the shade 20 which was a very hot shade and a very hard shade to actually get at the time because it turned out it was like anyone who was like a 420 or around that shade was 20 so it was a very popular shade I got it and I was actually really really impressed with it from the from the get-go the only beef I had with it at the time was that I had to apply it with my fingers and when I applied it with the sponge it just didn't look very good so it was something that was a little bit messy because I had to apply it with my fingers and I do tend to prefer to apply like foundations or tints or whatever with a sponge but that was really it and for the most part it was fantastic it matched my skin tone it looked really good and I was really happy with it and I was thinking this was going to be my tint However, the more I wore this product the more it kind of changed and it started to feel very heavy on my skin it didn't feel very light I started getting annoyed by having to apply it with my fingers all the time and some days when I applied it it worked really nicely and some days when I applied it it just looked like a hot mess and I just didn't really like the unreliability of this product I felt like it sometimes just looked way too cakey and when it's summer and you're after a tint or it's spring and you're after a tint and you want that really nice lightweight finish it just felt very cloying on my skin and heavy and kind of not nice so it just didn't feel very carefree like a tint shit one thing i will say though is that the shade range was really fantastic i think there were 30 shades which is really unheard of for a tint and i have to say something i thought about earlier is that Fenty Beauty this year hasn't really been as good as it, it was when it launched in my opinion when she first came out she was really really changing the game and really challenging the status quo I don't really feel like that has happened this year the most recent launch which was the liquid highlighter it was it looked nice but it kind of just looked like random and I didn't really see the point of it I felt like that would have potentially launched as part of other things maybe like a whole winter snow or winter sun collection or something it just feels like they're not putting as much effort into the Fenty Beauty brand at the moment I don't know if that's because they're focusing on Fenty skin and Savage times Fenty but I just feel like at the moment they've taken their gas off the pedal a little bit with Fenty Beauty and I think it would be such a shame if they waste this amazing brand that has done so much for the beauty industry really force people to kind of be better and do better and also like started a whole trend for like actually inclusive bronzers Fenty Beauty should totally take all credit for that because no one was really doing or even considering deeper skin tones with bronzers before Fenty did that and I just hope that Fenty continue to push the push the envelope and continue to like push boundaries and challenge the beauty industry and not just churn out random stuff that they think 
will just sell whilst, whilst they work on other things. Um, so that's my only random thought I had on Fenty. It was just kind of like niggling at me. But this was a nice product at the start. I just, I don't know if anyone else felt that, but yeah, not, not for me, unfortunately. Another product that I found very disappointing in 2021 was the Glossier Monochromes. All of the monochromes just the ones i bought i bought the shade teak and another one i can't remember what it's called i'll put it on the screen right here i got two shades that were very similar i like the idea of the glossier monochromes i thought it was a really clever solution to a problem that we probably do all have like a lot of us tend to know which colors we like and maybe just want different formulas different finishes so the idea with the monochrome are that you have like one shade or one tone and then you have like different finishes so you have a matte finish a satin and then a shine or a glitter or a shimmer and i think it's really really clever and i really like the concept of it the two shades i picked just didn't really do anything they kind of looked a bit boring they kind of were a bit blah they weren't really rich enough in pigment and intensity for my skin tone and what i like for eyeshadows also the one i got also had a dodgy mirror that kept falling out every two seconds and it really winds me up also i do find the packaging very bulky it's supposed to be like sustainable and recyclable but one of the things i'm trying to promote and showcase is that sustainability doesn't have to be like really clunky and ugly and awkward and like practical it can actually still be quite glamorous and chic and nice and attractive and appealing and i feel like this is like literally the opposite of attractive and appealing it feels very like utilitarian it feels very like you want recycling let's give you tin box it's just really bizarre and just really thick and it doesn't need to be this thick also they've like imprinted the eyeshadow pans on them and it makes it more raised they don't need to do that because there's a mirror behind it there's no logic to it they also made this like i guess it's refillable because this is like refillable they made the the dish at the bottom really really thick doesn't need to be like it doesn't need to be it could literally be the same size as this so i just don't like this packaging i think it's really ugly and i just think it gives kind of sustainability and refillability a bad name that being said i did go to the glossier pop-up store and i loved it and i fell in love with it and i did swatch a lot of other shades in this monochromes collection and there were a lot of shades in there that were really really stunning so if you do want to see what those shades are go and check out that vlog I'm not sure what number it was but it says glossier pop-up you'll see the glossier pop-up on the thumbnail i will check that vlog out because there were some really nice shades i think there was a purple like a, bear, a raspberry purpley shade that was really nice there were some really really nice ones i think i just got two bad ones which then made me look at all the other bad things about this product it's not bad it's just that it's not great and with glossier 99.9% .9 of the things they do are great and so the standard for them is super high so i think for that reason this is definitely in one of my disappointing products of 2021 another disappointing product of 2021 is a product that's actually good it is the secret camouflage concealer from laura mercier in the shade 6N and it is a beautiful beautiful product on one side you have a lighter kind of highlightery shade and on the other side you have a corrector I used one as my main concealer shade because it was much more like my skin tone and that was the corrector side unfortunately the corrector side which is the side I use as just my concealer for every day but not every day literally ran out in two weeks two weeks i was just winding it up and it was finished and i was like oh i literally just bought this two weeks ago so that was the only reason this is in my worst makeup of 2021 it's just too expensive to last so short an amount of time like my tom ford concealer has run out now but at least that lasted a couple of months even though i still resent the fact that it's expensive i have to buy it again in such a short amount of time the fact that this literally lasted a fortnight was so annoying to me and so offensive to me that i just didn't even know what to do so i'm not going to buy it again but i really really liked it and i hope that they increase the size of it or release it in a different form so this is actually one gram each so the tom ford is five mil so five grams this is one gram a side which is just actually a 
bit of a a mickey take if i'm being honest it's kind of rude to actually bother giving us a product that's one gram each <laughs> like really so if you want to know in ounces that is 0.03 ounces each side but yeah it's i think it was like 30 something pounds it wasn't cheap enough to, for me to buy this every every two weeks and i don't feel like i should have to go to a shop or go online to buy this every two weeks that just seems really over the top and really unnecessary another disappointing product of 2021 wasn't that bad was the anastasia beverly hills stick highlighter in the shade bubbly mind this product i like the highlighter it's like a light champagne color it is very silky it is very nice it's a bit too light for my cheek highlighter it's a really nice nose bridge highlighter and it's very silky it's easy to blend in i don't really have a problem with that my only problem with this is that for a duo product they decided to put a brush on the end that doesn't blend out the highlighter still in my most disappointing products of 2021 is the ambient lighting edit universe unlocked palette this came out at the same time as the volume three which you guys know i really enjoyed using and i was really thankful that it existed a lot of us had a lot of discussion and debate about whether we thought it was too late too little too late but in my opinion i always think better late than never when it comes to inclusion but obviously there is always a line and there is always a a choice whether you actually want to support a brand that doesn't support you blah blah blah, blah. we've been through it but they they also released at the same time two of these kind of face palettes so it was kind of a confusing launch because they released the long-awaited trio uh ambient lighting trio in number three for deeper skin tones and it was like okay finally they've released this they're being inclusive and then they released two face palettes for a light and a medium skin and even though they said this was medium deep nothing about this really reads medium deep apart from maybe the top blusher which is kind of deepish but this is supposed to be a face powder this is supposed to be like a bronzing illuminating powder and this is a blusher but none of these are really really rich none of these are really formulated for a deeper skin tone and if you put this side by side with the volume three which is formulated for a deeper skin tone all of the shades in there are richer than all of the shades in here so it's very very clear from the get-go that they thought okay let's stop with a volume three ambient lighting palette and give them that that's what they're getting <laughs> that's what they wanted that's what they're getting we're not giving them any more or any less so I think it was kind of a confusing message that they were sending, first of all. But I thought, since they're saying it's kind of medium dark, maybe I'll just give it a go. I did a poll, you guys said, yeah, let's have a look at it, let's see what it's like. So, we did a review and I kind of put it on and I thought, okay, it's fine, I'm making it work. And then I went away and I was editing the video and I kind of just got kind of annoyed by the fact that I was make, still making things work. I just kind of got frustrated that I was having to force myself to try and make this work for me when it very clearly didn't even though they said it might and I just didn't really like that it didn't really sit well with me so I kind of filmed like an ending to the video where I was like actually guys nah this is just a no from me um and I haven't used it since <laughs> at all like there's just there's just no appeal for me to use this it just doesn't feel like it works for me this was okay as a kind of under eye powder but it's still airing on the light side it's all just a bit too light it's all a bit ashy it's all a bit let's just try and make this work and i don't think we should have to try and make things work especially when there are you know so many other brands that cater to all skin tones and really consider all skin tones when they're creating and i just think oh i just don't like this product i also don't like the packaging either it's really like ugly it's like this brown camouflage with like gold and it's tinny it's a tin and the clasp is annoying i just don't like it so I think that's my thoughts on that. I don't enjoy this product. I have no intentions of using it again. Maybe one day I will. I'm going to do a couple of videos soon trying things I haven't tried since I tried them. So maybe maybe I'll give it another go and maybe I'll change my mind. But so far I'm just 
not feeling this one. Hey guys, so last up on my list of disappointing products, worst makeup of 2021. This is when I get a little bit sheepish and this is where I'm a bit like, <laughs> should I be saying this? So first up as product, I, a product I don't have any qualms in saying it was a bit of a disappointing product this year. Not bad, just was a bit of a disappointing product. The Patrick Ta uh, Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. Not a bad palette, didn't mind it at all. I like the fact that it had like these little creams here under their little flap, it was cute. The brown's nice, the red's nice. And I think that's about as far as I can go with this palette. These two shadows were fine. These shadows aren't really fine. Like this is like an interesting toppery shade and it does kind of do something, but the glitters are very, very fine. They're very sheer, they don't really, it's just a bit of sheer glitter. There's nothing really going on. There's no real oomph behind them. There's no real pigment behind them. There's not even much glitter behind them. I don't really know. There's just not much purpose for this palette. I like the creams, but the creams are a bit thick. I like the mattes, but the mattes are just like any other matte. The shimmers, there's a lot of them and not really any of them are very good. So I think I, I, I've changed my opinion quite a lot about this palette. I kind of was like, yeah, that seems kind of cool. Yeah, I can make it work. I, didn't. I love Patrick Tarr. I really like his blush palette that he just released. I really like his uh, bronzer contour duo palette, which I did mention in my favorite. He does create a lot of really nice products, but I just feel like this was like, nah. It's just, when you create eyeshadow palettes and you, this was quite expensive, I think it was like 50 pounds. When you create nice big eyeshadow palettes like this and you're trying to make a statement and say, I'm a new brand, this is my amazing eyeshadow palette. And there are, there are Natasha Denonas in the world, there are, there are Pat McGraths in the world. You gotta come correct, and I do not feel like this is it. This is not it. This is just not it. Another disappointing product of 2021. It's not the worst by any means. It's just a bit disappointing, and it's new, so I'm, I'm still disappointed. So this is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is when this video starts to get controversial and people start to go, are you insane? Also, you said it was fine like three weeks ago all true <laughs> but i do still think this is one of my most disappointing not most this is a disappointing product of 2021 I love the packaging of this, let's just say that. I love the deep bronze packaging. It's very smart, it's very sleek, it's very easy to use, it's gorgeous. And if this was all eyeshadows, I would be a happy lady. Unfortunately, it is not. I have two very large cheek palettes. I have a very intense blusher, which is not a cream. I haven't got that. And I have a blusher that's a bit light. And this is the, is this deeper skin tone? Yeah, this is the deeper skin tone one. So it's called dark. It's not necessarily for deeper skin tones because she made a point to say both the light and the dark can be used by anyone. And I do like that, but it's, nothing in here is something I don't have or can't find somewhere else in my collection already. And that's the reason it's a disappointing product. It's not bad at all, but I don't need it. Nobody needs it. Like nobody and i don't know why she thought anybody did and that's my <laughs> sorry this is so horrible <laughs> this video feels so mean but that's the only thing i can say about it it's all nice and fine and lovely and the quality is great especially with the eyeshadows the quality is lovely but i just don't think i need it i don't think anyone needs it i think we all if you have any makeup that you bought in the last five years you have everything in here okay maybe you want it in one palette but i don't want these i just don't i don't want these so yeah i i feel weird about saying this it's fine it's not bad it's not bad quality it's gorgeously presented it's stunningly presented i think if this palette was introduced like four years ago then it might have been a bit more revolutionary but i think where the makeup community is and where consumers are and just people in general are i just don't think it's doing what it thought it was doing. And last but not least, in my worst makeup of 2021, and this by no means is worst makeup. This is 
slightly disappointing. This is the one I didn't want to do. I didn't want to put in here. I didn't even want to mention it because I feel dirty. I feel filthy saying this. <laughs> But one of my disappointing products of 2021 and only because the bar they have set themselves and the rest of the universe is so very high. My disappointing product of make of 2020-21, one of my disappointing products of 2021 is the Pat McGrath Labs Utopian Dreams, Fancy, Dream, Mothership Number 9 Palette. And the reason this is in here is because it's Pat McGrath and Pat McGrath is Pat McGrath and I just feel like Pat McGrath came out so hard as such a like bar setter that I just feel like this is just like going to a place I really don't want her to go. So the reason I say that is this is also also the most beautifully packaged of all of her motherships which is why it's really upsetting to actually even put this in here. I love the packaging of this so much. It's just my favorite one. It's really so cool. It's like a disco raver ice queen, snow queen. It's just oh, amazing. So that in itself is just fantastic. And probably just for that reason, I'm not disappointed I have it because I just love the, the box. So I'm, I'm fine with that. But the reason it is in my disappointing product is because I actually find this quite unusable as an eyeshadow palette for me and maybe if I was a bit more creative in terms of like being daring with my eye looks I'd like this but I just find this eyeshadow palette like kind of confusing and I don't really know what she wants me to do <laughs> like I just don't know what she wants me to do with this all of the shades are fine but none of the shades are Pat McGrath shades like this actually this purple is pretty cool and I feel like she's stopped doing her sheeny shiny shades and one of the reasons I love my Foyeristic Vixen so much is because it has such creamy interesting smooth layered uh, multi-dimensional glitters that have some weight to them that have some oomph to them that have something behind them that is like ooh, what is that nothing in here is really doing that for me all of the matte shades are very pink or light and then there's a coral which isn't as good as the one in the mothership eight and i feel like that one was really good so why do i need this one and then there's this whitey shade again which i've got in so many of her palettes and then there's this kind of like it's very nice creamy bronze it's kind of like natasha's given me one pat's already given me one before i've got one there's a gold shimmery shiny shade which pat has given me a hundred times so if i'm a fan of pat mcgrath i've got it then there's this one, which is just, it's just glitter. It's not a sheeny shiny shade. It's not Pat McGrath. So that is the reason this is on here. And it feels like gross to even say it because she is the queen of makeup. She is makeup. Like Pat McGrath is makeup. She defines what we wear five years before we even know what we're going to wear on our eyes or want to wear on our eyes. Her references and inspirations are just so like, vast and diverse and incredible that she is really the goat but i just find this palette like so disappointing it does not live up to its packaging and it does not live up to pat mcgrath and i just wanted to put that out there and just be honest yeah obviously the quality of the eyeshadow is still great and obviously the packaging is still gorgeous and the box is just phenomenal and it's pat mcgrath so obviously i'm never going to regret buying it but of all of the mother ships i have this is the one that i'm like I wish I didn't have it. Not wish I didn't have it, but I didn't need to have that. And if I knew what I knew about this palette, I wouldn't have FOMO not having it. And I don't think anyone should have FOMO not having it unless they're just collecting the box. Because for the box, it is pretty cool. But that's the only reason that I would want to have this palette. That's it, guys. Those are my worst makeup of 2021. Only a few are worse, a few disappointments, a few huge disappointments, and then a few mini disappointments. Nothing, nothing too sad. 
a bit sad. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Which ones did I miss? Which ones should not have been in here? Let me know. I know a few of you guys are going to be like, what? What have you done? Why did you say that about her or him? Um, but that's just how I feel. So <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. I'm going to be trying some different style videos for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be trying to test some things out, see if I can try and be a bit creative, try some new things I haven't tried before. So hopefully they'll be good. I'm not going to do a poll on them. I'm just going to do them and see what happens. It could be a disaster, but it could be good. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. So I'm going to be doing that for the next couple of weeks. I'm also going to be trying to go back through my collection and start using things because I do realize that I talk about sustainability on one platform and then I'm just like consuming loads of stuff on another platform so it doesn't quite make sense also makes me feel a little bit icky so I want to feel less icky so I'm going to be more sustainable and more conscious of my consumption while still giving you guys the newness and the content that you want and that I love to do so hopefully that will be good I'm going to be doing that I'm going to be doing some different videos I'm also doing a giveaway guys because it is the end of the year and I got some random things from Glossier who have been one of my favorite brands to cover this year and one of the brands you guys have really enjoyed me covering this year so I'm going to be doing a giveaway of lots of little minis from Glossier a milk jelly cleanser a mini one a balm.com lip balm a oh this one's good a future dew full size oil serum hybrid future dew and a lash slick mascara full size and a boy brow in clear full size so some really good products here all of the glossier kind of essentials and i'm going to be sending this out to the lucky winner so do make sure you are subscribed if you haven't subscribed already do subscribe like this video and comment down below if you would like to win the glossier giveaway just say something that says glossier giveaway like i'd like to win i want to win this is the best video ever give me the glossier stuff i don't care about this video whatever you want to put below anyway guys thank you so much for watching i hope you like this video if you haven't subscribed already guys please subscribe we would love to have you in the slap family thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one